Hey guys, today I'm going to show you one of my favorite projects I've ever made. It's an underwater scene using polymer clay and a bunch of other stuff. I am Eugene and welcome to the Curious Crafty channel. <laughs> Now something that you might not know about me is that crafting and YouTube is actually completely new to me. This is not my full-time job and I, I don't work with these kind of things on a daily basis. The last time I took an art class was when I was in school and I was about 10 years old. And this means that most of the things that you see on my channel, apart from the art experiment here and there that I do off camera, is actually step by step how I learned to do these things for the first time. I'm actually an engineer with a full-time job that I love and uh, I have a wide variety of interests. I'm really curious about how things work and if I see something awesome, I always want to figure out how to do it myself. I really wanted to start a YouTube channel and when I started, I thought a lot about what kind of videos would I like to make and what would keep on challenging me and keep me interested over a long time. And DIY arts and crafts seemed to be the right fit. I didn't have a lot of experience with arts and crafts, but I was okay with DIY stuff. And it seemed to me like this would provide me with an endless list of things that I can do. I can learn many new skills. I can exercise my creativity. Uh, it will challenge me and it will also give me a nice break from my day job. So this is what my channel is about. I am the Curious Crafter Guy. Now one of the things that I was really curious about was to try and create a miniature reef. I have saw many videos about people creating reefs from polymer clay and then they stopped there. But I wanted to go one step further. I wanted to create an underwater scene with rocks and sand and, and ocean plants and animals. And I even considered submerging it in resin but I decided to leave that bit out for now until I had more confidence and did a few more experiments. To create the underwater scene, I needed to learn how to work with quite a few new materials and I decided to create the rocks first. For the rocks I used Plaster of Paris because you can create a mix and then cast it in foil and then form basic rock structures. But this was also a learning process and I've made a few mistakes when I tried it for the first time. I expected it to be kind of like cement, which becomes quite viscous and you know it's ready to use and then you can use it in whatever way you want. But Plaster of Paris is completely different. When you mix it, you have to stop adding powder when the mixture is it's still very liquid or has a very low viscosity. So it just looks like grey water basically and, and you would want to add more powder, but if you do, it will turn solid almost immediately, which is what happened to me. But a good thing is that uh, this low viscosity also means that it will seep into all the cracks and you'll get really fine details, which is perfect for this kind of thing. I created many different sizes and manipulated the foil to add variations to the rock shapes. I decided that while I was at it, I might as well just create a bunch of rocks so that I have spares that I can use if some break or to do some experiments or I can use them on future projects. Once the rocks dried out over a day or two, I took the foil off and expected them. I saw that I could glue some of them together to create even more varieties of rock shapes and I used wood glue for this. Now I don't laugh but the first time I actually tried to use hot glue, my go-to solution, which uh, does not stick to this powdery object. Surprisingly, these rocks are really easy to cut with a utility knife, so you can flatten them on the one side to make them easier to stick to a base. And you can also cut some grooves into them to add more detail. I cleaned out the dust using a large paintbrush and I found that by doing this repeatedly, you would round all the edges, which is actually perfect because I was looking for a way to create a rock that looks like it was weathered by water flow around it over a long time. 
I thought a lot about the colors that I would use to, to color the rocks when I painted them and I decided to go with a dark gray base which I would then complement with a darker wash that I would use for the shadows and a light gray that I would use for highlighting the edges and on the shiny surfaces. Now, I should have waited until I actually fixed the rocks to the base before I painted it uh, because I damaged it while I was adding it but anyway that's how you learn. I used a piece of scrap wood or a piece of plank for the base then I used air drying clay to create the ocean floor and the great thing about the air drying clay is that it's really easy to work with. Air drying clay is a water based clay so that means that as long as you keep it wet it will stay malleable. You have to be careful that your pieces don't dry out before you're done so what I did was to just often coat it with a thin layer of water and even some plastic if I had to take an extended break. Some tips I could give for working with air drying clay is one, always keep a wet cloth nearby so that you can keep on cleaning your hands. You'll see that a white powder will build up on your hands as you work with it and it dries out. And the second thing is that you have to make sure that the surface that you want the clay to stick to is completely wet. So for the base, I just made the plank completely wet and then the clay would stick to it. Otherwise, it will just peel off as it dries out. You get many different brands of air drying clay and I'm pretty sure you can actually make it yourself at home with some homemade recipes. But since I am still a noob and I wanted to use a high quality product, I went for DAS bonding clay and I'm really glad I did this because I'm really happy with how it turned out. I will add some links in the description if you want to check it out on Amazon. Now while I was adding the rocks to the base, my hands were still wet from the air drying clay. The water on my hands dissolved the acrylic paint from the rocks and that is why you can see these white areas of damage. Um, but luckily this was not that difficult to fix later on. After I added the rocks in their general locations, I used air drying clay to create these sand ripples which formed due to turbulence in the water. And I created these from strips of clay that I just squashed onto the floor and then I sharpened the tip. And after doing this a few times I actually realized it's much easier or better to just pinch up the existing floor clay into a point because then it sticks much better to the floor. If you add the little strip afterwards it will tend to want to move around. For some reason I was always quite hesitant to start doing projects on my channel that involved painting. It always seemed so difficult to me and I didn't want to take the leap and buy the paint and the brushes. But actually it's now one of the things that I enjoy the most so I can really recommend it. If, you, if you're afraid of painting just go get it and start doing it. And to get the basics I just watched a few YouTube videos to see what those guys did to make their projects look good and I just broke down each step that they did. And one of the first things that I learned was the process of using the darker colors for the shadows and the lighter colors for highlighting edges or exposed surfaces. For the darker colors I use a wash which is a watered down version with lots of black pigment in it and this seeps into the cracks to create those shadows. Now for the exposed surfaces on the other hand I used a dry brushing technique and this means you add paint to the brush then you dry it off on a piece of cloth and you would then brush over the rocks and all the sharp edges will actually scrape off the remaining paint and it will look like there's a shiny edge on that side. Another tip that I can give you is if you want it to look like the sun is shining from above you just do the dry brushing from the top to bottom and the brush will then hit all the surfaces at the top first it will miss all the shadowy bits and then connect with all the ones that are exposed to the light. To create the sand layer on the ocean floor I first made sure that the clay and the painted rocks were completely dried out. I then painted over the ocean floor with a wood glue or PVA glue and made sure I didn't miss any spots and if you do you will get these bold spots on your surface basically so you have to make sure that there's glue everywhere just don't get any glue on your rocks so I scooped up some white colored sand that looks like sea sand and used a sock or a stocking to filter out any pieces that I don't want on my craft. I then sprinkled this over the piece and I let it dry overnight and then I repeated the process for a second layer and I was then happy with how that looked. Now you have to take some consideration for the viscosity of the glue that you're using. If your glue is too runny it will tend to pool up between the sand ripples and you would get too much sand collecting in that area. And the other problem is you won't get any glue on the tips of these sand ripples so you won't get any sand to stick to that. The next challenge was to learn about polymer clay and naturally I wondered what it's made of. Polymer clay actually doesn't contain any clay. 
as the name suggests it's made from uh, polymers which are essentially very large complex molecules that come in a very wide variety and have a wide range of properties and in this case it's made of polyvinyl chloride polymer which means it's essentially plastic Polyvinyl chloride is PVC and this is one of the most common materials that you can actually find in your house. They mix this with a bunch of liquid plasticizers, coloring, agents and fillers until they get like a clay consistency. There are many different brands that you can get but the one that I could get my hands on was Fimo which worked really well for me. I looked at a few sites and from what I can tell, polymer clay is non-toxic and safe to use and it does not produce any fumes if you follow the instructions that the suppliers give you. It's a plastic so you don't want to eat it or overeat it but generally the clay is baked at really low temperatures where it does not produce any toxic fumes and it's safe to use in your normal oven. But at high temperatures it can produce fumes uh, just as plastics would. So it's really important to follow the pliers instructions. I have seen some sites that say let your oven vent after baking to get rid of any fumes and also uh, don't bake food on any surfaces that you use for baking clay and also don't use any utensils for food preparation that you previously used for sculpting clay. And that's I guess is a little bit obvious. Before you start working on your clay crafts, you want to soften it up and make sure it's completely flexible. Uh, especially older clay can be quite brittle and clay softening is done by rolling and flattening and folding the clay over and over which adds uh, a little bit of heat to it and this makes it more flexible. So you can do this using your hands which will also add a little bit of heat but this can sometimes be tough especially if you have older clay or a harder brand. So there are alternatives. One thing you can do is you can add clay softeners, which is kind of like clay, but it's just really, really soft. But you still have to mix that in. But then you can use rollers or you can use clay rolling machines. Some people even use these pasta rolling machines. Polymer clay is not water-based, so it's not wet and that means it cannot dry out and this makes it quite a lot easier to store, but it also means that you won't be able to add water to it to soften it. Some people say that because it's oil-based, you can add a little bit of petroleum jelly or Vaseline, just a small amount, to help soften this up and I tried it and it kind of works, but I found that it actually starts to break down the bonds a little bit so it becomes a bit messy. I just prefer to actually roll and fold and knead the clay until I get the consistency that I want. One day I will definitely buy one of those pasta rolling machines again to help with this. It is especially nice if you want to mix different colors and create color gradients. And I actually had one, but I sold it just before I discovered polymer clay, so that's a bit disappointing. Polymer clay actually hardens faster than other clays. When you bake polymer clay in an oven, it takes only about 15 to 30 minutes to completely cure. And this is opposed to air drying clay, for example, that takes one to two days. Uh, it's quite hard after you've cured it, but you can still cut it with these heavy duty scissors and you can also drill holes in it. Polymer clay is a little bit expensive, a little bit more expensive than other clays, but I found that you only need a little bit of it anyway, so a little bit goes a long way. I like that the polymer clay has these vibrant colors. It doesn't fade over time. The color stays the same before, during and after you've created what you want. You can paint over it as well to add a little bit more detail. I use acrylic paint and this is typically done after it's cured in the oven. I use acrylic paint to add final details and this makes a world of a difference. Since this is a tropical reef, it can be quite colorful and it was quite satisfying actually in this stage to add these final touches because you can see what the final products would look like. I used a dry brush technique mostly for this, but also some wet paint where I needed to add spots here and there. This little octopus is actually the very first thing that I made in this project. I did it before I even started on the rocks and these things because I just wanted to test out the polymer clay for the first time. And, and because it was a first test, I didn't actually record it because I didn't expect it to go that well, but I was really happy with how it came out. I regret not recording it. But it's really simple to do. You just have to make its tiny legs first 
and you create these little strips, you make them pointy, and then you add its head on top of the point where they come together, and then you can add the eyes afterwards as well. I was wondering what you would call all of these uh, coral structures. An interesting fact about corals, they're not actually plants at all, but they're animals called polyps. They're a soft-bodied animal that actually are relatives of the jellyfish and sea anemones. But over time, a layer of calcium carbonate builds up around them to create these hard structures. And they filter food out of the water, so they clean the water where they live. They thrive in areas of shallow water where there are strong currents that can bring them food. The reason why they're so colorful is actually because of the algae that live inside the coral and these algae is actually animals as well. Corals are some of the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet and they provide a home for fish and plants and other marine animals. They clean the water, they stabilize the ocean floor, they extract carbon dioxide from the ocean and all these amazing things. And this means we have to take really good care of them because if we lose the corals, we lose all of the animals and plants and things that go with them and all these amazing things that they do. They're really like the forests of the oceans. At this point, all the clay was oven hardened and painted and uh, it was probably the most exciting part of the build. I took stock of everything that I had and had to start building the ocean scene. I just started on one end and started placing all the, the colorful bits first. I left out any of the grass pieces because I thought I could just add these afterwards and I wanted to spread out the colorful ones first. I didn't use any glue when I did this because I wanted to be able to move them around until I was satisfied. Then one by one I glued them on using hot glue and the hot glue works really well for this process. It sets instantly. Now something you have to watch out for is these little strings that look like spider webs that form when you pull away from one of the hot glue drops. Now the way I dealt with these little spider webs from the hot glue was to either pinch them off afterwards using tweezers, but even a better way was to just use the hot glue gun to do one or two circles around the drop after I placed it. And this would then break the little strand and also pick up any pieces that remain. And I found that this is a really good habit to develop. If you make a drop, just go once or twice with a hot glue gun around the size of it. And you'll see that it picks up all of these little strands. You also have to be careful not to get too much glue because then it will show around the edges of the little reef pieces. But this wasn't too difficult to get rid of as well. I just used some glue and then added some sand afterwards and this would cover it completely from view. For some of the little reef pieces I cut off the pointy ends so that it was flat and then this would make a much better connecting point for the glue. These little pieces that I cut off I actually use sometimes as more decorations to add more color to the scene. Once the colorful pieces were in place, I added the grass. Now it's beginning to look like a real underwater scene. I really enjoyed this a lot, more than any of my other crafts actually. I just love underwater stuff and even from a young age I really enjoyed being in the ocean and snorkeling and doing scuba diving and things like that. So you can expect to see a lot more underwater crafts or water related crafts using resin and stuff like that on this channel in the future. I grouped the grass blades together in some places to create little bunches of it and this looks more natural. At this point I still left the sides open because I, I was hoping to get a handle on the resin bit so I can submerge this whole thing in resin but I just wasn't comfortable with the experiments that I did. I, I just got too many bubbles and things in it and I was afraid of ruining this whole thing before I had the proper equipment like a pressure vessel or something to do it properly. So I decided to just finish off this project right here and I added some glue on the side and then added a layer of sand and this would look like it's a block of sand. And this is it guys, an underwater diorama using plaster of Paris for the rocks, air drying clay for the ocean floor and polymer clay for the plants and animals. And what a great and fun project this was. I really learned so much from this. I just want to say guys, don't be afraid to try something new. Exercise that creativity and become a curious crafter. Have a nice day.